Hello everyone and welcome to Chat with Nene Alice. If this is your first time tuning in to Chat with Nene Alice, don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe, and don't forget to send in your comments. We as today we have the honor to have Honorable Veronica Kadisise, the parliamentarian representing constituency 094 in Moyamba district, the president for the female caucus in the Sierra Leone Parliament, and also the parliamentarian representing the West African region in the Commonwealth, Parli Commonwealth Female Parliament. So we have her in our midst today. We also know that she has so many other caps that she is wearing, but she will let us know that. And we are here today to talk about female representation in Parliament. Honorable Kadi Veronica Kadisi, you're most welcome to our studios and thanks for coming. Thank Do you, you want Veronica. to say hello to... Hello, everyone. I'm Honorable Veronica Kadisise, as you have heard from Nene. I am the president for the female parliamentary caucus in parliament and also representing the Commonwealth in the Commonwealth Parliamentary um, Association. We have Commonwealth women parliamentarians and also I'm a member of the ECOWAS parliament. Thank you so much. So Thank let's you. start the conversation. First of all, I just want you to explain what the Female Caucus is all about in the Sierra Leone Parliament. Thank you very much. Well, um, we started it um, some 10 years ago when we saw that there is a, a need for women to come together. And, uh, you know, as women, since we are in the male-dominated area, if we don't galvanize ourselves or bring ourselves together, it will be very difficult for even policies to pass in Parliament. So we saw it necessary that we should come together. So we launched the program. We are in all political parties. We are there. Initially, it was just two parties, APC and SLPP. Well, we decided that, well, since we are women, we are few. So let us forget about party colors and let's work in the interest of the women, especially the vulnerables, because uh, we are here representing our people mm -hmm. and the women out there. We call them the voiceless because if we don't chat for them, if we don't talk for them, then there is tendency for them to be, you know, to be just there. So that's why we launched the program and it was um, so nice. The president gave his blessing. Then the, the then president mm -hmm. and his wife, Roman, the wife even came and the vice president came during the launching and some other women's organizations. It was a colorful one and we started the ball rolling to work in the interest of women, to pursue the issues of women. Whenever there is a policy or there is anything that we need to talk about women, we speak with one voice. So I just want you to tell, tell viewers how that role that you have been playing, you know, in galvanizing the female caucus and in also providing leadership for the female caucus, how has that helped you with the role you are now playing in the Commonwealth Female Parliament? Thank you very much. But when we started, I was in the president. Okay. It's only at this time, this of uh, the SLPP regime, because what we said, when the, the ruling party will, will obviously take the mantle of being the president for the caucus. So we agreed. So when we came again, and this, uh, the, the fifth parliament, I was then appointed as the president for the female caucus. Mm. But it has helped seriously because um, I have uh, the support of all the women. Now we have Hong Parliament, we have APC, SLPP, NGC, and, all, and even independents. So can, you can imagine. So they have high respect, high regard for me. They call me mama of the house and uh, we work together when there are issues. I call them, we chat in the office and we discuss things. Although it is not easy because um, they have their own, you know, as women, we have our own attitude. But as uh, the respect they have carried for me, we talk together, we, if there are any issues, we come and chat. If they have any problems, any challenges, they come to me. But sometimes if I mistake, they'll come and tell me, Mama, this is what and what and what we don't like. You listen to them, that is leadership. Sometimes it's not easy. We talk, we call them, we encourage them. And whenever we have uh, um, something to do, if like for instance, we want to talk on something in parliament we come together and discuss then we allow anybody that you want to talk because we want to we want the 
we want the women to break the ice because it is not easy to talk in that parliament it is not easy because it's male dominated yeah. sometimes when you get up to talk we have these undertones overtones they will distract you you know if you are not strong enough you will not say anything yeah. you'll be seated there so we encourage them you know we have this un un women uh, eu they come to us because we tell them what are our challenges public speeches they come they send people to come and train us so now it's better we can now stand there and talk anybody can take a take part you if the the speaker's eyes catches you then you get up there to talk yeah. and sometimes the speaker is um had passion for us in asking the women to talk mm -hmm. if you want to talk because sometimes all the men will just get up to talk but if a woman gets up they say no let us hear the voice of a woman yeah. you know that gives us the encouragement and coming back to your question yeah, the common word parliament the common and word also parliament. talk about you know both parliament the common word parliament and the ECOWAS parliament oh yes and in the echo let me start with ECOWAS parliament yeah. we have also what we call echo FEPA. That is the Female Parliamentary Again Association. Yes. That's what we call ECOFEPA. Again, it's a male dominated. But the problem there is the language barrier because um, we have French people yeah. and the Lusophone. Yes. You know, it is not easy. But we manage. We talk, we talk in signs, and sometimes um, they translate, the translators will help us. But for instance, if you want to get a uh, tete a tete with your friends, it's very difficult because yeah. some of us don't talk French. I did it up to from four <laughs> but you know in those days when you have the french master you don't have the the courage to even speak or be part of that person not doing that we are doing harm to ourselves mm -hmm. now here we are so that is the only reason then we we see into the issues of women again in that uh, in in the equals parliament in terms of adding the budget so that we can help ourselves in our various communities, mm -hmm. our various regions, mm -hmm. because we have 15 membership in the common in the ECOWAS Parliament. When there are problems, when, for instance, if we go to Ghana, mm -hmm. if there are issues they are relating to women, we have our small token that will go there and talk. We we'll talk to the the, the first lady. Mm -hmm. We as, uh, ask them their challenges in the community mm -hmm. and what will be seen doing or what um the what would be their ex expectance in terms of the ECOWAS um in the ECOWAS sector and also like when we had this uh mud slide in Sierra Leone mm -hmm. they came and they supported and also we went to Mali we supported b before their their uh, whatever so now in the commonwealth also I am the represent I'm representing the West region. Okay. I think it's about five countries. Mm -hmm. Again, we chat, we talk. You come with your your discourse. You don't have issue with language bar barrier at the common. No, 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 no. Commonwealth is English. It's English, yeah. it's English. So we speak English all throughout, and also there are other regions that are being represented. Mm -hmm. But I am representing West. You can take informations from Nigeria mm -hmm. about their challenges in their parliament. You go to Ghana. Mm -hmm. Then of course Sierra Leone, Cameroon, mm -hmm. and the other areas. Yeah. So we we put them together again. The problem is uh, funding, mm -hmm. but again we have started that. We have brought that to the attention that if they want us to go, like if they are having elections mm -hmm. in the other areas, we go there to support. Mm -hmm. How can you go without funding? So again in that area we have asked them to give us budget line mm -hmm. so that we'll be able to go to the other areas to help the women okay so um honorable i want us to talk about the electoral process in sierra leone how have that helped your campaign and how have that you know helped other women to come because i realized that um, you were part of the proportional representation uh, um, electoral system and now this new new system so how have you been able to work within two systems and which one do you think you know can help to bring more women well um, thank you very much i came under the proportional representation with that we had an increase of 19 percent of female representation because what they did they gave one seat each to a district so if you you a woman is strong enough to get a winnable seat mm -hmm. that is bravo for the women but what increased our number was the one 
per district mm -hmm. that they gave to um, your in the list yeah. in the proportional representation. Um, we are expecting a zipper system, one man, one woman, one man, one, one woman. woman yeah. But it didn't work. They only gave us one per district. And we agreed on that. Because since we are asking for 50%, it was not forthcoming. Mm -hmm. And uh, the problem here is, uh, again, I can say it's funding. Mm -hmm. And also with the political parties. Mm -hmm. If you don't have money, then don't try it. Mm -hmm. You know, you can talk, you'll be good in everything. But in terms of getting your symbols, mm -hmm. that creates problems. And uh, to us, let me talk for my own party. We have gender policy. We don't pay candidate of fee. Ah, okay. Women and youths, we don't pay candidate So what fee. is your party? SLPP, mm. the great SLPP. We don't <laughs> pay, you can see it from my, from my dress. From your uh, yes, <laughs> so we don't pay candidate of fee, but that is, a, that is a side. So how do you go about with the campaign? Mm. When you go to places, you have to meet with stakeholders, um, you have to pay transport, morale boosters, you have to cook for the people. If you are calling people to come and listen to your campaign, like my constituency, you have to work for two, five miles, six mm -hmm. miles to come. So you cannot invite somebody to come and listen to you without giving them food. Mm -hmm. You have to provide. So these are some of the challenges. Mm -hmm. But if we have this, um, I prefer the PR system. I, if they ask me, I would prefer the PR system because that will increase the number of women. Mm -hmm. Because if they say zipper system, then one man, one woman, one man, one woman, mm -hmm. that will be fine for us. Because if we say you go to election, sometimes most of, some districts don't have women. Mm -hmm. They don't have women. Like Bo, yes, Bo. They don't have women that want to contest the election. No, so they, they have, have they have women. What I'm saying now in parliament presently, mm -hmm. oh, we, okay. they don't have women parliamentarians. Yes, yeah. um, but there are women who opted. But they were not given the symbol. Mm -hmm. They did not make it. Because in the north, if you give a woman a symbol, definitely the woman will win. In the south, there are some areas, if you give a woman a symbol, definitely that woman will win. So those are the challenges that we are facing. So if they give us this PR system, I think it would be um, a bravo for the women in mm -hmm. terms of getting our numbers. Because um, they will say, okay, go and scout for your, yourself. Go and fight. But as women, we don't know how to fight. We don't have the money because you need to take care of your children. Yeah, Although the men will help us. Priority. Yes, we have to take care of the children, mm -hmm. schooling, lunch, and everything. Although, yes, the men will say they are doing the bulk of it. But we are giving 70% of support in the, in the homes. Okay, so I want us to you know, go back to something you said about the quota system. Now that we are talking about DUI, um, the gender empowerment bill, and there are lots of lobbying going around to ensure that that is passed. You know, what is your role in that? How have well, you again, helped, you we know, are lobbying. That? The lobbying should start from parliament. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of it all, it comes to parliament for debate, for ratification. And uh, if, the men, if you don't sensitize the men, if you're, because when they heard about the 30%, People will say, whom do you think they will remove from his seats to put a woman? <laughs> but there are modifications in the in the in the in the uh, in the bill in the GWI. There is a there are modifications until we explain to them. Yeah, yeah. We explain to them to know we are not going to remove you from your seat. What we started with is safe seats for women. Mm -hmm. Well, again, people are saying, yes, yeah, safe seats it will make you lazy or whatever. Well, whether lazy or not, we are asking for um, the 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 safe seat. When we went to Rwanda and Kenya, mm -hmm. we went to do some feasibility studies. We went there and asked them because they have higher percentage mm -hmm. of, women. of women representation. Mm -hmm. What they told us was they have safe seats for women. Oh, okay. Then they asked the political parties to give winnable seats again to women. Mm -hmm. Then when they gave the winnable seats with the 20% um, that they have put together, it gave them high number. Now mm -hmm. I think they are 60 or, or more mm -hmm. and also in Kenya. So we came back and started the ball rolling. Mm -hmm. And now the gender bill has been tabled. Mm -hmm. We are in the sensitization process. We are in the lobbying. We are campaigning. We even lobby to our honorable members. Now, well, they have agreed yeah. that some of them, because we have he for she, yes. uh, we have our supportive men. We have explained to them. They have, uh, they have understood the part of it because initially they will, not, they will say, 
no we will not accept in fact if anybody comes with that we will chase them out yeah and they are more than us we cannot say anything we are just well for now we are 19 as at now initially we are 18. so with that we lobby them i normally cook food for them i'll prepare delicious meal <laughs> and bring it for them yeah. so when they come they say you know what you are eating i say no mama i has cooked for you come and eat so they will provoke themselves that food that you are eating is for the gender bill mm -hmm. But now we are waiting for the debate. And I know pretty sure that it will pass by the grace of God. Amen. Because we have sensitized them. But the only sensitization again that I am yearning for is to go down to the people out there. Yeah. It's not only about parliament. It's also about Jehovah and Boys Village. Mm -hmm. We want to get town chiefs mm -hmm. who are women. We want to get section chiefs who are yeah. women. We even want to get paramount chiefs who are women. If you don't go there and sensitize and tell them the role, the importance, mm -hmm. how we should be seen working together. Because they have so much to do, the men have so much to do. But we, the little one that we do them, we are, we will help them. I think they should allow us, okay. because we are makers, we are pushers, we are multipliers, yeah. we are teachers. Yeah. We help them. They, we give, we help them with their excesses, mm -hmm. so that um, we can have a better, you know, a better nation. Yeah. So that is what we are saying. We are lobbying them. We go down to the various uh, villages, mm -hmm. the region and the districts we tell them well for the city now there is amount of some understanding but we need to expand it go to the village tell them why we want 30 percent it's not 100 it's not 50 initially at first we are asking for 50 percent but it did not come we have brought it down now to 30. let them see and reason that we are partners in development let us work together as one you have a woman you have a sister you have a daughter and you know there are so many things that a woman can do you know that what they can do even we can do it better although they provoke us you cannot climb it yeah. you cannot do this but there are other things that there are other mountains that you can climb okay. so don't mind them with those statements but um i want to bring this conversation to a close and it's it's been very exciting talking to you but this is a little bit critical question do you think the quota system is democratic of course yes that increases the percentage of women Mm -hmm. of women in any spheres mm -hmm. because if we say quota system uh if we come to parliament now and there is that quota system a man and a woman a man mm -hmm. and a woman there will be a chance mm -hmm. for women and it, it will be even more because if we are having 146 uh, uh parliament parliamentarians if there is a, uh, a zipper if there is this quota system obviously we'll be talking about 44. Yeah, of maybe 50 women or uh, even 50 because we'll find somebody who will go and challenge the other people. Yeah. It's not a challenge, maybe a winnable city will go and strike there. Because again, if we talk about challenge, they start to say, see, SO2, they don't begin challenging. So we don't want that. That is why we are lobbying them. Let them see and reason. We are partners in development. Men, what you can do, we can do it better. And we want you to give us the chance. Mm -hmm. You know, give us the ball rolling. Let us work together. It's not about 70, uh, about 50, 50 anymore. Mm -hmm. It's 30, 70. But if you go deep in the, to the homes, it's 70, 30. <laughs> so why can't you give us a chance? Let us work together as one so that we can make a better home. And behind any successful man, there is a strong woman. And behind any successful government, there are women. We are the women. We are the women. And we are ready to work. We are ready to make sure the economy grow, the economy boom. We are not saying we are 100%, never but we can do it better. Thank you so much, Auntie, um, Veronica. Auntie Vero. It's been a pleasure talking to you and viewers. I just want to you know, let you know that um, Honorable Veronica is such a very important personality in the past, in you know, having us to pass the um, gender empowerment bill. And she, she has made a lot of progress you know, working with women parliament. Sorry, one so more thank thing. You. Sorry, one more thing yes, about the proportional representation. Yeah. I benefited from the proportional representation. In 2005, I entered parliament yeah. under the proportional representation. Yeah and it helps it even reduces the 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 cost on on the government because to be by um, you know there are so many problems in the by elections or what but this time when there is proportional representation there is no by election by election you just they will just come from the person that is coming up if you are yeah. out the person popping yeah. that is why two people came out they, they died may their blessed souls rest in peace then i came up 
Okay. Yeah, so um, I have benefited and I know the goodies in the PR system. That is why I am highly supporting the PR system. Thank you so much. And viewers, if this is your first time tuning in to chat with Nene, at least this, don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe, and don't forget to send in your comments. And thank you so much, um, Honorable Veronica Kadisi, say you know, for gracing our stage. And we wish you well in your future endeavors. And um, we also want to wish viewers a pleasant day. Thank you so much.